what is going on guys welcome back to Mets central and the mets when i accidentally messed up the score on the pitcher one but three to one over the cincinnati reds there and we're going to talk about it in game eight of the regular season and yeah uh, i'm very happy about this again i apologize for messing up the pitching graphic score i accidentally left it instead of changing it but still that's neither here nor there because the mets actually won three to one like i mentioned and there was a lot to love in this game. This is probably my favorite win thus far of the year. Before we jump into it, leave a like here on your way in. Subscribe if you guys are new, especially if you're Met fans, and turn on your notifications so you know when I upload or go live on the channel next. I appreciate all of you guys that stopped in for the watch along stream that I did. I'm sorry that I couldn't do the entirety of this game. Unfortunately, I had to leave, but that no, I mean, I, I I'm shocked that it was easy and I wanted to go live because I thought maybe towards the end this thing was gonna get shaky, and that's why I was disappointed, but to get the reaction of a meltdown from me live but no that was not the case the pitching did so good Sean Mania going five innings like we needed him to and I wanted six but unfortunately I think it was the it was the third or the fourth inning where there was like a long at bat there that he had to go against and then he got into a bit of trouble there there was a stolen bag in there and then the fourth inning when he really got into some trouble but a huge double play to end the damn inning Brett Beatty looking unbelievable on both sides of the baseball he's swinging the bat well and that play that he had there on the double play the way he charges the baseball the way he's throwing the baseball across the diamond he looks so much more confident and then the bullpen I mean the bullpen was nails pretty much this entire game Lopez got into a little bit of trouble with the walk that he allowed there in the sixth inning but out, and then the stolen base with second and third but he did a very good job getting two K's getting out of it Rayleigh had a little bit of a shaky outing he allowed two walks but still did a very good job so he gives you an inning Ottavino which listen I am still going to say this because I am not for what Mendoza did even though it worked out today I am not for the idea of putting Ottavino in against the better part of the order and then going to Edwin Diaz in the ninth inning just because it's a save opportunity and they're doing it the traditional way. I would have rather seen Edwin Diaz go in there in the eighth inning to face a better part of the lineup. Again, it worked out, so I'm not going to complain. And Ottavino did great with his two strikeouts, but going forward, I want to see them utilize Edwin Diaz, you know, against better parts of the lineup because it's just not going to work out every time it's just that simple and I was hoping they could avoid even using Ottavino today but that didn't end up being the case and yeah you go to Lopez you go to Rayleigh Ottavino Diaz and they all did a very good job and combined for 12 strikeouts only five walks allowed only three hits too which is very huge because this offense has been struggling which they really struggled today like the offense did actually okay Nimmo and Alonso didn't do great both of them Oh fours today. I mean, Nimmo got hit by a pitch in this one, which helped out, of course. Um, but outside of that, yeah, like I, not bad at all. I mean, Francisco Lindor. How many times were we getting annoyed with Francisco Lindor? And we were we're talking about the standing ovation during the live stream. I was doing that, talking about the standing O that fans want to do, and I'm. I was on board with it personally, and he goes two for five today with a double, with a big home run as well. And the only complaint that people have is that, well, he did both those with nobody on base. And to that, I say, well, at least Alvarez drove in a run, which Francisco Alvarez has been good, granted. Poor fielding also led to that. And Brett Beatty got a hit too. Poor fielding led to that. But still, Marte grinding out good at bats, getting a couple of hits today. Very nice to see. I also forgot to update the graphic there for him. I apologize. A lot of errors today. A lot of errors by me. Um, as Marte had two hits today. Tyrone Taylor as well. Getting two hits. Um, McNeil even got a hit there. Again, you want to see him do Bader, uh, better Bader, though. That's what I was going to mention. The, the Bader thing's getting annoying. Uh, like I said, he had a deep pop out, which he thought he should have got a hold of. You could tell by his reaction. He didn't, but still, like... I'm not mad because the way that most of the lineup did, 3 for 11 with runners in scoring position, you want to see more killer instinct because the only other gripe that I have with this game is there was two points they had the bases loaded. It was the third inning and the fourth. No, not the fourth. What inning was it? I didn't say the fourth. Not the fourth. When was it? The second? Yeah, the second inning and the third. It was back-to-back. -back. Yeah, second and third. They had bases loaded. 
with one out in both innings. And I mean, the first time they had bases low and no outs in the second inning, and they are only able to muster one run out of both of those times they had the bases loaded. You want to see them punch these teams in the gut if you're going to complain about anything. It's they got to kick the damn keep, uh, teeth in on these teams and take advantage, especially because the Reds are really not that great of a team. And you know, credit to Abbott for getting out of certain jams and in general their pitching, but you still should be beating uh, teams like that a lot more badly and you know punching these teams in the mouth when you get the opportunity to with the bases loaded but again that's a small little complaint because they still did a very good job in terms of you know more consistently hitting and then the pitching was really what kept them in the ball game by being lights out being nails only allowing three hits only allowing the one run and Sean Benaya, like I said too got in the trouble worked out of it and I'm glad he was able to get five innings when in that fourth inning it looked like they were going to need to go to the bullpen, but a huge double play changed it because it, he was not locating his four seam off. So that inning, which really, really scared me because if you're not locating that four seam fastball. You got a problem. You're just throwing them high in the zone, throwing them out of the zone. And then he threw a perfect one to get a double play, which that's what I was asking for when I was watching the game as well. Just throw a four seam here, throws it, gets the double play. And, yeah, I mean, outside of that, not really much to talk about. Ottavino, funny enough, had his velocity down Diaz, too, and they ended up being fine. And in a fr uh, hitter-friendly ballpark, they did a very good job this entire series in general, limiting the damage outside of, of course, the second game of the series. But now they're in a spot where they won a series. They are now 3-6 and six on the year. Puts them in a better spot than you may have anticipated, especially because, you know, I worried that by them not taking the gamble yesterday to burn the bullpen a little more, it was going to put them in a hole and they'd look bad if they didn't win today. Well, they ended up winning today. So you take the series. It could have been a sweep, which is what's the most annoying part looking back at the series. Now they go to Atlanta, which is scares the living hell out of me. And all I could do here is hope that they find a way to split in Atlanta. I think if they could split in Atlanta, that's the best case scenario with being realistic. Obviously, best case is a sweep or three and one. But I think realistic, just a split would be good for me. Julio Tehran, those on the bump tomorrow, which does scare me because I, I'm going to be honest, to me, that reeks of a loss, especially because the bullpen got used a lot yet again today. The only guys that are going to be available tomorrow from the pen are Deekman. I don't even think Ramirez is. Garrett should be available. Um, Maybe they go to some of the higher leverage guys twice in a row, and then Drew Smith will be available. So they do have a couple of options, more options than they did yesterday against the Reds, but how much can Tehran give? I'm not sure because he has not pitched so far this year, but we will see um, for sure. We'll see, but that's really all I got with this game. Leave a like if you did enjoy the video here. Subscribe if you guys are new, especially if you're Met fans. Turn on your notifications so you know when I upload or go live on the channel next. Sorry for keeping it short, but Andrews are on soon, so got to run on that, and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.